G'day. Today we're doing a bit of work on a 2013 BT50. It's got the 3.2 litre diesel and it's got the 6R80 transmission, the 6 speed in it. What we're doing a transmission service on it, putting a bypass uh, cooler valve in it, bypassing the thermal valve. Now while you've got it up, it's a good idea to check all your unis, centre bearing on the tail shaft, any oil leaks or anything that's gone amiss, especially if it's a four wheel drive one and you've been doing a bit of four wheel driving. Now with these, they have the transmission heat exchanger, which basically means it's a little unit there on the side of the transmission. You've got coolant coming through and transmission fluid going through as well. Now you can get transmission oil cooler kits that'll run to the front of the, tra or the, front of the radiator there, but quite often you'll find that you can fit them here like we do, just behind the transfer case here. And that way you're not uh, restricting any airflow through the front there. There's already quite a bit of stuff at the front there. So we'll start off with uh, just draining the oil out of the transmission, removing the valve body and replacing the, the little thermal cooler valve in there. What they do is they open up at about 70 degrees Celsius and flow through this cooler here. So what we want to do, because uh, he does a fair bit of towing, is have the cooler working all the time, just so the transmission runs a lot cooler. Now I've just popped out the fillet plug there, just over here on the right hand side of the transmission. And we're going to just suck a bit of the oil out with our vacuum pump. It'll just make removing the pan a lot less messy. You can see the filter has already dropped out of the valve body. It means that that seal on the filter neck's not very good. We've got the range sensor here. You can see a lot of fine metal has accumulated on there. You can see that. Now chances are that the solenoids are contaminated like that as well. The issue with these solenoids, you can't really flush them out, even if they're operating okay, because they have a little magnet inside instead of a spring. Uh, you can find that video on another car that we did, where we pulled the uh, solenoids apart just to show that you can't really flush these solenoids effectively. Now to get the valve body off, we take out the case connector sleeve. We do that by just flipping up that little tang on there. You just push it up and it'll wind out that plug. And then we press this little fork here, pull that down. That just holds that sleeve in place. We can slide that little sleeve out, it's a little plastic sleeve with a couple O-rings on it. And then you can actually take out the valve body. To take out the valve body you just take out these bigger Torx bolts. Now we've got the valve body out, you can see where the tube seal sit, and the bridge seal, and also where the thermal valve sits in there. We're going to replace that thermal valve. And there's the thermal valve, we're going to replace that one. We're also going to flush the range sensor there. Okay, now make sure that the valve body is cooled down, because we're going to reuse the mechatronic plate, you don't want the plastic distorting in any way. And we're going to take off these two bolts here. You'll be able to see it on the other side, the ones that are holding the mechatronic plate on. These two, and these two here. So we'll just whiz them off quickly. When you're doing these sort of jobs, it's also a good idea to just measure and make sure that the bolt lengths are the same. It's a good habit. On these, it's not critical, but uh, on some bodies, it is. And now, very carefully, we're going to flip it over. You don't want to damage anything there. Put it around this way. And we're just going to carefully start lifting that mechatronic plate off the valve body. There are a couple of uh, guide pins there that it'll get stuck on, so it's important to, to pull it off evenly. And also over here you've got all those little terminals in the solenoids, so you've got to just pull it up by hand and with screwdriver. If you're leaning the screwdriver, be very careful you don't uh, damage these surfaces here, because that's where it actually seals the pressure, runs through the, those little sections there. So I can feel that the terminals on the solenoid are catching, so I've got to just wriggle it up. There we go. You can see that's moving around a bit, and that one's coming off the dial pin quite easily. There we go, that's off. And the whole point of getting that off is just to clean this range sensor there. Just slide that out. You've got to actually flex that little pin there to get it out, and it'll just slide out like that. Now you can see it's contaminated on both sides of that. I'll just give that a clean and some solvent. We'll just visually inspect everything else. There's a little bit of muck in there as well. We'll clean this. You can see on the mechatronic plate, those speed sensors have got a bit of muck on there as well. So a good idea to clean all that while you've got it out. You can see how much... We've got magnets underneath our wash tray there. You can see how much muck's come off that range sensor. And I'll just give it a blow out now. And a blast with some clean solvent. Okay, we've got it nice and clean. That little slider, clean, blowing it out. When you're blowing out the mechatronic plate, just be careful. There are some delicate sensitive components on there, so you don't do any damage to it. And now we push that back in. Remember just to flex that, just so it doesn't scrape along there a little bit. 
we go. Put it back on. And make sure that that little pin there is aligned with your selector over here, just out of camera view. And we just push it in gently and evenly. And I'll just locate that little pin there on that selector. Like that. Now as I'm pushing down, I'm going to be just squeezing here where these solenoid terminals are. And you just want to get it to go on evenly. Okay, seed it in. And put the bolts back in. Now the six bolts that hold the mechatronic plate up, you tighten them up to six, six newton meter and seven newton meter for the, the rest of the bolts that hold the valve body to the case. There we go. Make sure you've aligned the little that little pin there on the range sensor with the selector, otherwise you'll be in bother. And now we're ready to put the valve body back up. Now we're using one of these bypass valves. And that's what they look like. Basically what happens is that instead of having the, the temperature operated valve on it, you have this full flow valve. So you get a constant flow as soon as you start the vehicle, the transmission oil starts circulating through the cooling line. And just quickly there's the instructions for it. There's the original one and that's how we put it in. So you put it in with the step, the step towards the valve body. We'll push that up into the case like that. Now to put the bridge seal in and hold it in there as well as the valve, I'll use some of this high tack or firm tack lube guard assembly goo. As these warm up, all that goo just completely dissolves in the transmission fluid. So that'll just hold it up there while I get the valve body up. And you only want to use as much as you believe you need, don't overdo it, because this stuff can also uh, block one of the oil ports up for until the transmission warms up. And the same goes for the valve. This, this is the end that goes into the case, this side goes towards the valve body. And you just want that to hold up there until you get the valve body on. Now okay, we've got the bridge seal, replace these. That port there hasn't got a seal on it. On some they have four tubes, this one's got three. And the, we've got to make sure that that, I haven't put it up yet, that that valve will just stay in there until we get the valve body up. Just make sure you line the selector in, or you'll be in strife as well. And these bolts we do up to 7 Newton metre. Okay, we're up to the case connector. Now, the one on the left, the old one. But what you can see is there's a little pin on it. And that pin, as you're pushing it in, should be located at about 5.30. So a good idea to clean all that, make sure there's no road dirt or muck in there. Coat it with a bit of oil. Coat the seals with a bit of oil. And when you're pushing it in, we're in that position there, 5.30, that little pin on the bottom there. See that? Put that at 5.30 and it should just find its own way. And then what you've got to do is, because these rubber seals are constantly trying to push it out, you've got to keep tension on it, and then you can just slide that fork up that locates on that slot there. But if you're not keeping the tension on it, it the seals will be pushing the sleeve out a little bit, and you can actually do damage to that if you're trying to force it. It should just slide in nice and easily. Now sometimes those sleeves will go in very hard, but if you can keep a secret, I'll show you a little tool that I've made to help get it in. And it's this. What it does, what it does, it just sits inside there and you can just wind it out. You've got to put a little uh, lever on here just so you can push it in slowly as you undo this. The idea is to make it go in evenly. Now I've sprayed a bit of WD-40 in there and you just push that plug in. It'll find its own little spot, there we go. And then you just, as you're pushing it in, can not even see if I'm filming it, you just wind, pull that little pin down and it'll, it'll wind it in. Can't do it with one hand. Now I've got it started and then you just pull that down until you hear the click. And there we go, that's locked in. We've got the pan nice and clean. Always a good idea to leave these up on the ridge so you can get them working top and bottom. And we're going to add a neodymium magnet to the transmission as well because the oil was pretty dark in it. Now, if you're putting a neodymium magnet in there, you want to always test it without the gasket just to make sure it's not in the way of anything, especially any levers or linkages that are moving inside there. And you don't want them near the, uh, the solenoids either. With the filters, you want to just make a note or make sure you're putting the right one in. Uh, you won't be able to put the longer neck or pick up neck one in in the short where the shorter one goes, but you'll be able to put the shorter one in where the longer neck's supposed to go. And you can see that's 23mm and this one's 7mm. 
So this is the one that goes in this vehicle. And you can see the factory one, it's just straight. Whereas these ones have like a little step, but it's the overall height from there to there that's critical. And also the pickup neck. And it's a good idea as you're working on jobs you're unfamiliar with, to just double check your work as you go along. Make sure you haven't missed any bolts. Make sure you put all the bolts in first before you tighten it up. That'll uh, eliminate the, the chance of misaligning the gasket. We're using a cork rubber gasket, but these, these do come with an aluminium rubber gasket as well. Okay, we've got the pan back on. Now with these, because they've got that thermal uh, cooler valve, the proper way to test them is to get the thermal cooler valve open so you know you've got no air in the in the cooling circuit or in the hydraulic circuit in these transmissions. When you buy, put one of these bypass valves in there, you can actually check the oil level between 30 and 50 degrees. If you have a look on that little dipstick there, I can't get it to focus, it'll have a, a lower mark and a higher mark, A and B. So as it's cooler, at 30 to 50 degrees, you want to have it in between the A, and if you want to warm it right up to operating temperature, which is about 80 degrees, you've got to get it hot and up to the B mark there. A little bit hard to see there. There you go, we can see it there. But the problem is, is where you're checking it is right in there and you've got this hot exhaust right there so that's why these thermal bypass valves are a really good idea. And we are using the Tritec low viscosity LV so we've got about seven and a half litres in there. We've uh, put about four litres in, started it, and we've put another three and a half litres in. We're just going to start it now, we can keep the motor running and just get the oil level right, and hopefully we can get it to between 30 and 50 degrees. There we go. We've got it to the top of the A level mark on the little plastic dipstick. At, uh, oh, it's probably about 32 degrees. Anyway, I hope that information has helped. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Any comments, leave them in the section below. And throw us a beer if any of this has saved you any money or, or time or both. Thank you for watching.